welcome to day seven of the 50 days to your Pentecost, living and walking in the spirit. I'm Michael Pierce. I trust that today, uh, as you join the broadcast, God will give you something for your life for today that will encourage, it will bolster you up in your faith. It will give you a stronger resolve that that which you have committed to the Lord will continue to grow uh, in your life. You know, uh, it's already day seven. We're coming to the end of the first week of our 50 days, which means we've only got, uh, four, uh, what is it, 42 more days uh, after today. But as we continue this journey, I want you to know God is doing something in your life, through your life. Would you share that in the chat? Would you share in the chat where you're watching from? We want to uh, be able to make this as interactive as we possibly can. And so just put in the chat, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on uh, the uh, the YouTube channel, let us know where you're, you're watching from, what your questions are for our guest of the day. And if you aren't receiving our updates, uh, I just recommend that you go to our website, cfyc.org. And scroll down, you'll find a register button for the 50 days to your Pentecost. Click on it. You'll just give us a, your name and email address, and we will then send you regular updates on how you can be a part of what uh, all the things that are taking place in the 50 days uh, on this journey. So, so all of that getting out of the way, here we are, day seven. And uh, my good friend, you know, I've known Klaus Dieter uh, Passant for for many years, we have traveled throughout Central Asia together. We have ministered together in the beautiful city of Dusseldorf, uh, Germany. Klaus Dieter, it is a joy to have you here with us this morning here in Canada, afternoon in Germany. Thank you. It's a great joy and privilege for me to join you again this year for this 50 days to, uh, towards Pentecost. Great to be with you again. Well, it, it is just an absolute joy to have you. Just for a little background for some of you, uh, you know, Klaus Dieter and his wife, uh, uh, Hannelore, have pastored in Dusseldorf for over 18 years. And at a point, they came to the understanding that it was the time to raise up the next generation uh, and, and walk with father uh, and son, as it were, uh, mentoring and then releasing. And so... Uh, a number of years ago, Klaus Dieter and, and his wife released the overall leadership of their congregation, Jesus House, to the next generation. But even today, uh, Klaus Dieter and the family are in that same church. They are still a part of the leadership. You continually uh, are mentoring next generation leaders, whether that be in seminary uh, or on missionary trips to Central Asia. You are just this wonderful man who is a father. You have two sons. I believe you have five grandchildren. And, uh, uh, you know, Anne and I are so excited. Uh, we have joined the Grandparent Club uh, just this year. It's such a, a joy to have you. The last thing I want to say about Klaus Dieter, you know, some of his important life experiences uh, include when Jesus crossed his path. And maybe we'll, we can touch on on the, J the Jesus Revolution days, uh, both when you and I came into faith. and and But now, you know the love of the Father, not just the command of God, but the love of a heavenly Father and the, the joy of continually growing in the Holy Spirit. Klaus Dieter, you are a delight to our heart. Welcome to the broadcast. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, it's great to know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's so special. And it was, like, like you said, a, a kind of a, a journey. You know, when we became followers of Jesus in the beginning, it was all about him. The name of Jesus was all that was uh, in, our, in our thinking and speaking all the time. And then sometime later, we experienced the Father and his embrace and his uh, acceptance. And this was a very deep experience bringing healing to our wounded hearts yes. and then also to grow in uh, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It was, I mean, I still remember that Bible study night 
when the topic was the personality of the spirit. So not just the power, but a person who can think, who, ha who has emotions and uh, who is so wonderful as a, as a friend and a partner. Yes. And it's just great to know all three in one. It is. And, and, you know, they are, they are that they are three in one. They, they have their personality, their individual uh, yes. life. Uh, and yet they are completely submitted one to another. It is this wonderful picture of it's a perfect uh, picture of fellowship and, and love. It, it absolutely is. And, you know, one of the things that uh, today's broadcast, uh, we, we literally, we fall on the Jewish, the end of the Jewish Shabbat, uh, as we are on Saturday morning here in El, in Alberta, Canada, your Saturday afternoon, uh, just a few hours before sundown in Germany. And today's scripture uh, just, uh, I think, I think touches on a point where, where we need, why we need Shabbat, first of all, why we need rest. And, and secondly, uh, why we can come into greater uh, greater fellowship with the Lord because we take that rest. And so from Matthew 11, 28, um, and, and you can mention the, the rest of that uh, those verses if you want, uh, Klaus Dieter, but Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Yes. I ask Holy Spirit that each one watching, there is a certain weariness that they have they are at the end of a week uh they have had increased uh, circumstances maybe increased calamities in their life they they might be overwhelmed by all of the the news that they see in the in the media and they wonder god is is the end near are we going to make it i ask father that as klaus dieter shares there will be an impartation for those who are weary and burdened, and there, there will be this divine exchange, weariness for rest, yes. burden for being equally yoked with you, Lord. And so, Father, bless us as we have this conversation in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I would like to say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Actually, right now, a Messianic Jewish congregation is meeting in our facilities. Wow. So, but let's get back to the scripture. I mean, this is a very famous one. And uh, it's called in Germany, the Heilandshof, the call of the Savior. And uh, I like the message translation of this verse and the following verses. And uh, I picked them up uh, when I read that this is a scripture for today. And in the message, it says, Are you tired, worn mm. out, burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll okay. show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I love that. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. So I think this is all about a balanced lifestyle. So we, we talk a lot about work-life balance. Yeah. And uh, we talk about the tension between burnout and bore out. So you can be overworked because you try to do everything in your own strength. Mm. Or you can also uh, come to a point where boredom uh, captures all, all uh, kills all your initiative and passion. And this is the tension that we face. And uh, it's about a balanced lifestyle. And I remember that when I became, uh, when I entered full time ministry, my mentor in those days, he said one thing he said, Klaustide, you need to take a day of rest. Yeah. You need to live the principle of Shabbat. So he didn't say it must be the seventh day or whatever, but he said one day should be a day of rest. And uh, he made it so clear that I said, okay, I will do it. Okay, I did not live up to the standard all through the years, but I tried to do it. 
And whenever I stick to it, it was very, very helpful. And I know that this is uh, for many people a kind of a guarantee that they will survive, especially survive as leaders. So, so Klaus Dieter, uh, I, I, you and I, as we grew into ministry, uh, we were in a generation that was so uh, intense on uh, knowing the presence of God, knowing the will of God, sharing the word of God with ever with whomever we could. That mm -hmm. many times uh, we probably did not get rest. We did not get a, a, a Sabbath. And and I think we also have this notion that if it's a Sabbath rest, then it must be very religious. And I must take the entire day just to pray and be with God and 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 listen to worship. Well, let's be practical uh, for you. What does it look like to have rest? OK, I'll tell you. Uh... Paul tells the, the elders in, to, uh, in Ephesus when he leaves, take care of yourself and then of the flock. This also applies to the principle of having uh, time to care for yourself, which means having time to recover. To, uh, to, uh, it's time for regeneration. And uh, this has different aspects. There is the spiritual side, yes, but there's also the physical side and there's the emotional side. And... To have a day of rest does not necessarily mean that all time is uh, spent on Bible reading and praying and, and worshiping, which is nice if you do. But it, for me, it was important to get out, to take a long walk, to, to do a hiking tour or just take a walk with a dog. For 15 years, we had a dog and this was very, very helpful for me. Because uh, during some days of the week, it was my job to walk the dog. And so we went out for an hour or two. And this was a good time just to see nature uh, in springtime or in, wind, in autumn time, the changes, which you don't uh, realize when you are sitting in the office in the city. Yeah. And getting out, it made a whole difference. And you could pray in tongues, you could sing during that time, but you could just... Uh, yeah. Have, have now, now just, just a minute. Are, are you yes. saying that you could be out in the forest or out on a path and and you could be just uh, in nature and still be spiritual by praying in the spirit? Definitely. And even without praying in the spirit, I can be <laughs> spiritual. You know, I, I must admit, when I first started coming to Germany uh, in the early 2000s, uh, the the balance of going for walks and hikes mm -hmm. uh, or taking your bicycle and going on on bike paths uh, at first was a, a shock to my system because I didn't know what to do with this recreation time but I I started to uh, add it as a part of my the rhythm of my life and and I do a, a variety of different things, but exactly. but getting getting this recharge uh, in not just our spirit, but in our soul, uh, in our body, is a is a crucial crucial part of our yes. whole walk with God. Yeah, I think that our soul, our uh, emotional part, and our uh, our mind needs uh, pictures. And, and some food. So uh, you, a good music or a nice piece of literature or a sunset at the beach or in the mountains, this is good food for your inner being. And this is also what we need. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, so so how, how now do we, we take this practical thought um, and and the next verse you were you were mentioning the next yes. verse uh, because because this there the purpose of our rest is that we will actually be restored not not just to where we were but beyond where we were in mm -hmm. our relationships with one another and with the Lord. Yes, I mean what what is interesting is the means that will keep us uh, in this balance. And uh, it says it is his yoke. 
take my yoke upon you. And uh, <laughs> at first this might sound strange because Jesus calls those who are heavy burdened. And then he says, take upon you my yoke. This seems like a double burden, but this is not uh, how it should be understood because uh, take my yoke upon you is a kind of an invitation to unite with him. Wow. to unite and connect with him, to team up. You know, the yoke was a wooden bar that allowed two or more animals to work together. They were teamed together so that they might effectively work uh, together. And so this uh, call to take up his yoke is an invitation for uh, connecting. And the yoke of Jesus is not a burden, but it is uh, something that gives us rest. And I think the reason is because we are under the yoke together with him. Wow. So he's, he's the joint person in the yoke. And I mean, if he bear, carries the yoke together with me, I mean, who, who really is carrying the weight then? It must be him. And so I find rest. I find safety. And uh, also, I think that uh, the yoke is a picture of the word of God, because um, it says in Proverbs concerning the word of God, uh, bind them, the instructions of God, bind them continually upon your heart and tie them around your neck. <laughs> so when you walk, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. When you awake in the morning, they will talk to you. So the yoke of Jesus is nothing else than his word, his promises, And uh, the word with which we, uh, which we, how would I say, be, that becomes part of our being by meditating upon it. Yeah. It's so, so good. Yeah. Keep going. And so, so the scripture of today is basically an invitation to connect with him and, uh, yeah, to soak in his word like Mary. Who, she, she was sitting at the feet of Jesus to hear his word. And uh, it's also an invitation to learn from him because it says, watch how I do it. Yeah, uh, Work by the principle of grace. And this, I think, is another secret uh, of not getting uh, burnt out or getting weary. Because Paul says... I have labored more than all others, but not I in my own strength. Mm. But I have worked through, uh, the, it was the grace of God working through me. And wow. so Jesus says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. That's why I love that translation. Uh, so we, we are working. So we are not resting from work only, but we are resting in work, in our work. We are leaning on him. And this is, I think is a, uh, the, the, the real secret of it all. You so, know, if I, if I can jump in, Klaus Dieter, the, my, my thought runs quickly um, that as a generation, we have more burnout yes. of people who love God, who have a passion for their, their calling, have a, have a longing to help people. And yet, we end up being a, a generation with the greatest burnout that we've ever known. There's, there's contributing factors, including just the pace of life and the demands of, of the workplace and, and all of those things. And, and how do we perform enough? But setting those things aside, we have not known that our rest was a invitation to connect i love when you said that mm -hmm. we are we it's an invitation as we are walking in the garden as we are as we are you know maybe taking our spouse uh by the hand mm -hmm. and and walking with them and you know resting for my wife is different than for me right right and and yes. so so now i actually i can serve her rest by being with her in that. And mm -hmm. it might not be the full rest that I need or that I want, but 
uh, you know, her walking, she loves to walk in shopping malls, not to purchase things, yes. thank the good Lord, but but it is just that getting out, being around people, but not having to interact and just being able to be rejuvenated. And yes. so whatever the, the point of, of connection that you can have, whether it be with your spouse, whether it be with the Lord, um, these these times of rest, dare I say, I, I actually rest more now than I have ever rested in my life. And it would, it would seem that the labor of so many years has now brought the, the, the joy to my life that, that there is an ease yes. in the yoke. There is an ease in the work because it's it's I am in the work of the Lord and I'm not just doing the work of the Lord. Yes. Well said. Yes. Continue with any thoughts on, on this, Klaus Dieter. Yes, what you said is true that people uh, experience this in a different different manner. So the same is true with my wife and, and I when we are on vacation. She loves to rest and to read and just relax. And I need to do something. I must I must walk, I must climb, I must hike. And so we, we know about this and we arrange uh, our being together in that way. And we respect each other's differences in personality, which yeah. is fine. No, you know what? Uh, Yes. It's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, a, a few years ago, uh, three other couples, uh, we all talked about going on a holiday together. And and they're yes. all, all, all four of the couples were involved in ministry. And so I said, uh, Anne and I invited them. If they wanted to come, they could. Um, and within two hours, everyone had booked the same holiday. And, and what we found interesting was all of the women... We didn't know this about one another, but until we took this rest, all of the women would, you would find them, we were on a cruise, and you would find them scattered around on the ship in a quiet corner reading their book. Uh, in the quietness of the of the warm of the warm air. And the men would would go and they would play mini golf or they would go for a walk, uh, or or they would even have a game of cards together. It was, but each one received. Yeah their 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 rest this is an important point for us that that you know if you're an executive if you're a student you still need this rest that Absolutely. the lord offers to you yes and i mean the bible is full of pictures uh showing this uh invitation like uh, i mentioned mary of uh, mary that uh, was of bethany Another picture would be John, the disciple, leaning on Jesus' breath at the Last Supper and uh, also having his, his uh, head on, on the breast of Jesus just to hear what his heart is saying. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, the bosom of Jesus where his deepest thoughts are being shared and, and hidden. Or think about Jacob dreaming on an open heaven, so just being t telling the Lord, Lord, here I am, uh, I relax in your presence. And this was also something that, that helps me to find rest. But one, so if, I'm, if I sense that I'm w getting weary, uh, there are two things I sometimes do, besides seeking a place just to get all other things aside, walking outside or something. The first is I pray in tongues. This is a great help for me to come into an inner peace. And the second point is that I try to relax and remember uh, and meditate upon experiences with the Lord that I had before. Mm. Just like uh, one of these basic experiences where I sense the Father heart of, of the Lord so strongly. And I still have this inner picture of what what I saw when it happened, yeah, and and I can, uh, I can recall it, and this helps me also to calm down and be strengthened in this deep truth that has become a part of my life. You, you know, this is so good because actually 
Uh, Anne is having her Sabbath this morning. She has been most of the days with me on the broadcast, but but in her in her uh, neuroscience life coaching and mm -hmm. and her partnering with people in prayer, this 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 opportunity to remember a, a, a point where you are grateful and have thanksgiving in your heart mm -hmm. for what the Lord has done. It literally releases um, chemical endorphins within your yes. mind that actually recreate the mind because now you are setting your affection on something that, that has touched you in a profound way. Yes. And, and it doesn't have to be a spiritual thought for a spiritual response to come to your heart. Yes, It's amazing. It's an absolute amazing, amazing thing. This this conversation, Klaus Dieter, we're going to have to have you come back uh, because because you touching on this point of of experiencing God and, and remembering Him in that way. This this is this complete washing of your soul, so that the the, the things that the Father has for you today can be experienced. Just touch on that before we before we say goodbye to everyone. Yes, I think it also has to do with uh, uh, realizing that the heaven is open, that we live under what we call an open heaven. You know, we have songs where we cry out, Lord, open the heavens. <laughs> I mean, heaven is open. Jesus wow. came, the Holy Spirit came, the uh, certain in the temple was uh, separated from up to down, and uh, heaven is open. And... Uh, this invitation uh, that is uh, that comes from from God in in Revelation in the book of Revelation to the Apostle John, come up here, and I will show you. I will give you revelation. Uh, it is still valid. Is valid for us, wow. and uh, to realize He is here. He invites me uh, to receive from Him, or He is here, and I can just be safe because of his presence, this is a great help. And especially in days like, like these, uh, I don't know if I shared with you what uh, a, a pastor said on one of the last leaders' conferences I, I joined. Uh, he shared about an experience in uh, South Africa, which was called the Golden Hour. Uh, they were about to take some pictures at the shore, and the photographer said, be there at that special time. And it was the last hour before sunset, and they called it the golden hour because the shadows get larger, but the, the sun gets more golden and glorious. And this is a picture uh, of this season in which we are living. And it's so good in the midst of all troubles, when the shadows get larger, wow. to uh, find your place in his presence, which is so glorious. And just remember, he is here. His presence is real. Uh, I feel safe when he is close to me. This is a secret which will help us to prevail even in difficult times where there is upheaval and, and, and uh, troubles uh, politically or nat in nature or economically. But it's an hour which is golden. And, you know, we have the problems, yes. but we have the assurance we can rest in the Lord. There is a Sabbath. Yeah, there is a, a day of rest which is now available. Jesus is our Sabbath. He is our day of rest. Wow. Even in times of difficulty. And what I sometimes do is I just uh, close my eyes and I calm down in, inwardly. And I call it, I take the elevator upstairs. And uh, so I, I remember he is here and I'm safe in him. And then I sense his presence. Like I, want a man. To, I want you to lead us in this. The, the, the anointing is all over this. I want you to lead the impartation of okay. taking this elevator uh, to the golden place. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. And we thank you so much that there's a rest for your people, for your beloved.
daughters and your beloved sons. There's a place of rest where we are safe and secure and where we find peace in our souls. Father, thank you that Jesus is our Shabbat, that he is our rest, that he is the peace of our life, the Lord of peace, the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you that we are invited to come to this place of rest. And I ask that you would yeah, put uh, gr the grace on all those who listens and who are here right now or who listens to this broad uh, podcast later, yeah. that they would experience this open heaven and that they would experience how great it is to be under the wings of the Almighty God. Thank mm -hmm. you that we are under the shadows of your wings. Thank you, Lord. And so put your grace upon all the hearers so that we will be people who not just find rest here and find rest there, mm -hmm. but live in your rest continually because yeah. you are with us, Emmanuel. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to make this concrete and alive in all of our hearts. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, folks, if you if you want to to be able to speak with Klaus Dieter, we've put his email in the chat. Reach out to him. Uh, he is a man of experience of what he's speaking. It's not just a teaching, uh, but he has applied this in his life. Uh, Anne and I are looking forward to being with you tomorrow. We're going to take a few moments to uh, actually uh, look back at the week that we've had, bring out some of the highlights, share some of our personal thoughts. And, and then on Monday, we are going to have a delight. Uh, Orna Grinman from Jerusalem, uh, a Messianic Jew born in Israel, raised and lives in Israel. She will be with us on Monday. You will not want to miss it. Until tomorrow, <clears throat> may the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. And may your journey to your Pentecost be filled with the hope of the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.